I'm Steven. And I'm Kevin. In today's episode of The Steven and Kevin Show, we're going to talk about building a niche using LinkedIn. Did you hear the music? Is that our soundtrack now? Who's gonna kick this one off? You keep pretty good tabs on who's done it recently. No, you you can you can do it. I did it last time. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is episode number forty-two of the Stephen and Kevin Show, and today we're gonna to talk specifically about LinkedIn, and we're gonna talk niche marketing. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't read our book, The Indispensable LinkedIn Sales Guide for Financial Advisors, we talk about this topic in the book. You should get a copy of it. Before we jump into it today, Stephen, um, I I heard this somewhere, so I don't really know the source exactly. But how many? Uh, you know, a lot of people start podcasts, right? There's there's like millions of podcasts. How long do you think people get in the podcast process? Like how many podcasts do you think the average person gets to and then they just, they stop. They stop creating podcasts. Do you know the answer? I know this? the answer. Oh, that's a good question. I'm going to guess it's low. I'd say the average is five. Oh, that was pretty close. It's seven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. They get to the seventh one and then they decide I'm not doing this. Anymore. They realize nobody's listening or this is hard work. Yeah. Or, <laughs> exactly. And it is hard work, right? This is Monday morning, actually in the morning, sorry, afternoon for us. Uh, and uh, we're doing it on a Monday. Well, <laughs> as opposed to Tuesday. Well, I think uh, Mondays, you know, it's a lot of stuff to do on Mondays. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and I think the other piece of it is it's... Uh, it's the barrier to entry is pretty low. Like if you wanted to start a podcast sure. today, technically you could. It doesn't yeah. take a whole lot of other than a mic to get into it. But uh, we've stuck with it for 42. Take that. I know. Six times I, the industry average. <laughs> I was uh, pretty excited to, to hear that it was a lower number. So uh, today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn niche marketing. And it, it's a great way to think about LinkedIn because LinkedIn is, I, I think, really powerful for people who are targeting a certain niche. Exactly. Granted, if you're Mr. or Mrs. Financial Professional and you've got clients in a variety of industries with a variety of ages, most people do, um, LinkedIn's still plenty powerful for you. But if you're specializing in, let's say, dentists or casinos or attorneys or people who went to a certain school or work at a certain company, LinkedIn gives you the ability to really profile these folks. Yeah, it's a niche marketer's dream, giant database that we can slice and dice however we want. So um, today what we're going to do is pick one particular industry or, or profession, and we're actually going to pick dentists. And we're going to go, kind of go through the process of showing you how we would go about building that type of, of niche, how we build our brand all the way to how we find people and, and reach out to them. So uh, stay tuned on this one. If you already have a niche that you'd like to further target on LinkedIn, or if you're just thinking that would be nice to have a niche, why don't I go down that path? Yeah. I think this will be helpful for you too. Before we dive in, okay. shameless plug number two, uh, if you haven't already completed uh, the coaching consultation form and you have any interest at all in talking to a performance coach here at our company, We'd uh, love to see that profile roll in, and there will be a link in the show notes. What was so, pitch? What was pitch number one? The book. Oh, yes, the it's book. a very subtle pitch, but that was how you do pitch number three, right? Is Same make one. you say it again? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway. Moving on. So right. today <laughs> we're going after dentist today, folks. Yeah. And this we're, may, you go ahead, Stephen. This may or may not be your niche, but today that's what we're going to focus on for what no other reason than that was first one that we came up with. So. We've done a little bit of uh, profiling online already and pulled up some relevant examples we're going to walk you through. Yeah. So if you're listening via podcast and you're just listening to the audio, this is one where you might want to go to YouTube and check it out because we have some screen sharing going on as well. Yeah. And uh, either way, we'll, we'll try to explain it to you verbally so that if you're in the car, you can still make sense of what we're talking about. So... Section number one, we're going to be talking about your profile. Yeah. So if you're going to, if you're going to build a niche on LinkedIn, this is kind of where you where you want to start. And your profile needs to scream that you know your target market, that you're an expert in that field. And we found one particular profile here that we feel like does a really good job of that. And that is Reese here. Um, he is the CEO of Dentist Advisors. So first off, you're going to start with uh, your your headline, right? So, I mean, he's saying he's a CEO of DentistAdvisors.com. Obviously, this guy knows advisors. So you want to have a headline that says something 
along these lines, or it might say helping dentists pursue financial success or comprehensive financial planning for dentists, or we know dentists or something like that. Your headline should not be your current title, which is what it defaults to. It needs to talk to your niche. And this is a time where you have to decide how much are you going to portray yourself as an expert in that field? Sure. Right. Because if you are uh, Jane or Johnny corporate executive, do you arrive at Reese's profile and say, eh, not really a dentist. Uh, this is not for me. I think right? de- de- he he's goes gone in, all in. Yeah, he's all in here yeah. on dentists. And so this is this is one end of the extreme. And as you think about your profile, Kevin, what would you do if you say, you know what, I'd like to have dentists, but that's not all I want to work with. How would yeah. you brand it? Then? Um, I think you could say, you know, financial uh, or a CFP for business owners, dentists, corporate executives. I think you throw in a couple of different options is what you do. You kind of mix it in there. Right. Gotcha. Um, the other thing here that, and this is one, if you scroll up a little bit on, on Reese's profile here, up to the top, up higher. Um, he has like his background, I think could do a little bit of work. I think that's his, his company logo or something like that. But I think his background could say something more about how he works with dentists or some kind of tagline or something that's mm. dentist related. Um, that's just one little critique there. Let's keep on moving down here. Um, the other things that you're going to look at, we're going to get into posts in a second, his summary. And you need to, you need to write a summary here. You have 2000 characters to talk about what you do. You really want to say how you work with your niche, right? Um, how, how we help dentists connect with me. If you are a dentist looking for X, Y, and Z or whatever mm-hmm. it might be, you know, speak right to them. Don't write your summary from the perspective of, um, you know, your success and, you know, and, 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 you know, a lot of people write the summary and, and the issue that they have here is they write it like everyone else does. And that's like basically to find a job because they see LinkedIn as a place for recruiters and to find a job, write it from the perspective of how you add value to your, to your target market. Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're thinking about whether it's dentists or attorneys or accountants or Caterpillar execs, where whatever it may be, look up some other people who specialize in that and look how they framed it. This guy we found in about 30 seconds worth of searching to to see he is clearly labeled as a dentist advisor. Shifting gears, uh, strategy number two when you're thinking about niche marketing on LinkedIn is the advanced search. Yes. This is really how you get targeted in finding connections who are within that niche. So, we're going to walk you through a couple of examples. If you're listening on the podcast, you know uh, the box at the top of your LinkedIn screen. It's a blank search box. To the right of that, there's a button that says advanced. And when you click on that, it pulls up a whole array of options that allow you to search through your network intelligently. Mm-hmm. So you can pick things like keywords or the name of their title or where they live or where they work or used to work or how they're connected to you. There are a lot of different possibilities here. I'm going to walk you through one example here. And it's a really simple one. Basically, what we're looking for here are people who are dentists who are in our network or extended network. So under title, I'd put something like dentist. Mm -hmm. And it's a great time to use some Boolean modifiers. So I might say dentist, capital or dental. And I could throw in a whole host of others. Uh, Orthodontic, oral surgeon, orthodontist, periodontist prosthodontist, oral pathologist, endodontist, Whoa. DDS. DDS is a big one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, and you can throw as many or as few of those terms in there as you'd like. People describe themselves differently on LinkedIn. I like what you did here, though, in terms of eliminating certain results. Yeah, because what do you think is going to happen? If I put in dentist under title or dental under title, you're going to get a lot of, and we did this, mm-hmm. dental hygienist, yes, dental assistants, even got a dental intern thrown in there. So you can start to exclude some of them by putting in a capital not and then hygienist and not assistant. We want that to be their current title. So that's what I'll select. We want them to be near us, right? If you're prospecting, most of you are prospecting locally. So let's say within 50 miles of us, they could either be our connections, uh, connections of our connections, which Mm -hmm. is second degree. Or third, I just want a real complete list of who are the dentists who are on LinkedIn, who live in our area, yeah. right? And that'd be the first search that I would run. So I'll hit the search button. It'll pop up. You know, there's a bunch of them here because 541 results. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of dental work needed here in the <laughs> Central Carolina area. Well, you know, what's interesting, too, is, is, is some of the listeners might be thinking that, oh, well, I probably need a premium version of LinkedIn to do that. As of right now, at this point in time, you do not. I mean, there there's some rumors that LinkedIn is going to take away the advanced search for uh, for the free version. But right now you can run that exact search that we just ran absolutely free. Right. And here's a list of all the people. And then what it'll also do is show you how do you know these people. So with 
Ashley, Dr. Ashley White here, we're going to be able to see that the person in between us, no surprise in Kevin's network, is a financial advisor. Right. Uh, and the same with a number of these people. You'll see how you're mapped to them. Uh, topic for another day, but ideally you'd be getting introduced to Ashley through Lloyd, right? Perfect. Okay. So that was advanced search. So we talked about branding. We went over some just the core components of branding. Talked a little bit about running advanced searches to find your target market. Now we're going to talk about another strategy, and that's building a group. Really, the idea behind building a, a group on LinkedIn, and basically anyone can create a group, is to create a magnetic effect, right? Is to, to get your target market joining a particular group. Now, we have a lot of examples of this, and, and in the LinkedIn book, we have an example um, of, of an advisor that we worked with who found out that a, a large Fortune 500 company was was terminating their pensions, and he decided, decided to come a, create a group that was like XYZ company pension termination, right? And what was amazing with this group is he didn't market it or anything. He had 800 members over the course of a few months because he was posting resources and information about the pension termination. And this advisor was basically like building a huge <laughs> leads list, and it was, it was a fantastic source of, of new business. Now, what we could do, I mean, think about this. Think about creating a group. Look, Dennis Network. Look, there's right now just for groups around Dennis, there's 379 uh, with that keyword on LinkedIn, but you could create a group that's like retirement resources for dentists. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if that exists. I don't know if it exists, but there's so many out there and you could be the one who creates it. You could be the one who you know, pushes it out and you never know it could become this magnetic effect where now you're drawing people in. Now you need to post good content in that group and make it actually a helpful resource. So you want people to come there and come back and share it with other people. But I think there's a really big opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, shifting gears, let's talk a little bit about advocate search as a means to niche prospecting. I had shown you earlier the advanced search, which mm -hmm. basically combs your entire network for people who fit a certain profile. When you're thinking advocate search, think about one specific person in your network who might be able to give you some inroads into your niche, right? So uh, here's, here's one person in Kevin's network. We just pull, pulled this person up randomly. And what you do is you click on their number of connections. And when you click on their number of connections, as long as it's blue, it's going to take you down to a list of all the people that they know. Mm -hmm. You click on the little magnifying glass there and you type in your keyword, whether it's dentist or accountant or anything like that. We click that and uh, here we are. Here's her one connection that's a dentist. So how would we use that? Let's say that, for example, uh, this person, Whitney, is coming in. Let's say she's one of Kevin's clients. She comes into the office. Kevin might say, hey, Whitney, you know, uh, we're, we're really forming a specialty here around dentists. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to know that you're connected to, to at least one dentist here in the area. How well do you know Caitlin? Exactly, right? yeah. So we're going to bring it into conversation, which is totally nor a normal thing to do nowadays. Mm -hmm. She's not going to be thinking that you're really stalking through her network, as long as you ask about it the right way. <laughs> and right. so that's an advocate search. You're going through people you know and finding out who they know in your niche. Yeah, so think about the people that you're going to be running into that you're going to be seeing soon. Run that search based on that target market and, and start asking mm -hmm. for very targeted introductions. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, the closer they are to that market, let's say that Caitlin... Uh, or let's say that Kevin's contact, Whitney, was an actual dentist. That'd be even better. She'd have a very fruitful uh, search down here because she'd know a lot of people in that space. Consultants, de you know, two dentists, dentists themselves. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that most advisors, when they're thinking about building a niche, they probably already have a couple clients who Correct. they want to replicate, right? right? So whether it was Raytheon executives or, or business owners, whatever it might be, they're probably connected to other people who are just like themselves. So yeah, you're right, Stephen. It's going to be much more fruitful than that search. Cool. All right. Next one here is cold connecting. And we're not going to show you a screen share of this, but um, here's here's the concept. And look, there's a, there's a lot of opinions about building LinkedIn contacts. Should I take more of a quality approach where I'm only connecting with people that I really, really know? Should I take a quantity approach and start building out a big network of prospects for me? And when we think about, I mean, obviously it depends upon where you are in your career and a lot of other factors, but for newer advisors or advisors who are really specifically building a niche, we err on the side of quantity. Right? I think there's a social proof element that if I specialize in working with dentists and I'm connected to 7,000 dentists, mm -hmm. I look like I know what I'm doing. Not to mention, now I have the ability to start reaching out to these people directly and asking for meetings because we're connected to each other. So you could leverage Stephen's advanced search 
you run that advanced search, and then you might say, you know what, I'm going to connect with these people. Mm -hmm. right. right. And the more people that you have who are dentist connections, the more fruitful your advanced searches are going to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of benefits to connecting widely if you are, in fact, niche marketing on LinkedIn. And, and maybe you have a newsletter for, for, for dentists or, or whatever it might be. I mean, if you connect with them, you now can export their email address, right? And I know it's a, my PC is a little spammy, right? But it, it might be. But but it's effective. Do you want these dentists' as client or not? Right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, speaking of content, uh, publisher content is yes. is another uh, way that you can niche market using LinkedIn. Let's say, for example, if we were this guy Reese Harper, mm -hmm. who by the way we don't know. I'm we sure don't he know looks Reece. like he runs a great business, so we found him. We use him as an example. Um, if you're him, post content about dentist, right? Yes. And this is some of the stuff that he's posted. These he are video podcast. interviews, podcast, if you will. But you can also post written commentary, right? So let's say you have something that's, you know, and you might say, well, I don't have a ton of stuff off the shelf that's built for accountants or business owners or dentists or engineers or anything, people that went to Appalachian State. You, uh, you can pretty easily modify the current content that you have to reflect a specialty in their space. Right. Yeah. I mean, how, uh, you know, it would not take a lot of effort to modify an article that's on financial planning in general to reflect financial planning basics for dentist. Right? Exactly. It's, Top three questions we get from our dentist clients, whatever yeah. it might be, but it's, it's some content that's specific to them. And the, the reason you would go about doing this is number one, when you click on Reese's profile, it becomes pretty clear when you look, glance at these things that he is a specialist in dentist. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it shows up on your profile is great. Number two, it can be sent out to everybody within your network. So let's say you build this broad network of dentists, you publish your content that's built specifically for dentists. Perfect. It's a pretty good strategy right there. And, and lastly, the content that you post here is searchable on the web in general. You don't yes. have to be connected with somebody for them to arrive at your content if they're Google searching financial planning for dentists, mm -hmm. for example. So uh, a lot of reasons for publishing content if you're able to do it within your firm uh, compliance guidelines. So just to, to summarize what we talked about today in terms of building a niche, I mean, you have obviously one, building your profile that appeals to that niche. Next, advanced searches that Stephen went through, building a, a, sub, you know, a specific group for your niche, mm -hmm. and, um, advocate search, cold connecting, and using content marketing, using the publisher feature to start putting out some content. And the great thing about when you do that too is, like you said, Stephen, everyone's gonna get this little notification here and the little flag notification that something was, was posted. And mm -hmm. if you build a big network, a lot of people are being notified. Yeah, so again, whether you wanna go full bore as uh, Mr. Harper has here, and mm -hmm. you just wanna say flat out, I am the advisor to uh, Major League Baseball players or whatever, whatever the, your, your specialty is, Great, take that route. At a minimum, everybody out there ought to be thinking about the clusters of clients that you currently have yes. and how you could turn those small clusters into a reputable niche, mm -hmm. right? It kills me, Kevin, kills me. When I talk to an advisor who is kind of tapping around a, a niche or, or semi-established in a certain niche at a company, so let's say they're in Procter & Gamble or they're in Hershey or wherever it is, and they don't use LinkedIn. I mean, yeah. what, what better way is there to map out all the connections of people that you know within that organization to see job titles, you know, to see the, how long they've been there? It's just a gold mine. Yeah. Even if you're not going to fully brand yourself as the financial advisor to Procter & Gamble, you want to be able to go in and map out your connections into that company. Exactly. I think with the, with the growth of technology that... Um, more and more investors, you know, and I think just like any any profession, you're looking for someone to work with who specializes in, in what you do, right? I mean, mm -hmm. really. So, I mean, I think the growth of, of niches is going to continue to grow, and I think that's a perfect segue when you even think about our business and our coaching it business. I mean, if you want a coach and you want a coach who specializes in working with financial advisors and insurance agents, that's what we do, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and you'll get that feeling if you go to our website, obviously, and if you take a look at our LinkedIn profiles, it's very clear. Yeah, uh, perfect segue, Kevin, as yeah, you said. I, I tried, I tried. It's almost as though you had that pre-planned. I didn't, it just came to me. You're so good. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for tuning in today. We hope this was helpful. If uh, Again, if, you, if you're listening to this one, it may be worth going back and seeing some of the examples yes. on our YouTube channel. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you next week.